Um, first of all, Autism Awareness Night, special cause um, that affects a lot of us here in this program in the school, but also nationally. So, a lot of credit for uh, the six borough the fans, unbelievable environment. It make, makes a huge difference at home when we have that type of energy. Um, so, so, thank you to everyone for coming out. Uh, just a good win for us down in Samir, uh, down our two primary ball handlers at that ball mark, Bill Keys. Bro Reed just showed unbelievable toughness tonight. Total team effort, um, you know, early in the game, got to the line 27 times, and I thought we didn't settle 14-3. Uh, so, great win. Uh, a lot of respect for Allen and their program with the accomplished this year. So, you, you said Tuesday night that you, you were still confident in this team's ability to deliver, and you knew how to put it together. What, what do you say about how much that manifested itself tonight? Same thing I'll say when we lost to St. Peter's by 20 or careful at all. My, my conviction and belief, you're not – like, you guys got to get this. I don't lose my confidence. We don't lose our confidence. It's a matter of going out and executing. You, you, I, I know what I'm doing. He knows what he's doing. The other 12 guys know what they're doing. It's a matter of us doing it. So it's, for me, I'm not hoping anything. I'm expecting it. And it's a matter of us cutting the nonsense out and stop being immature and playing like 22-year-old men. And when we do that, that's who we are. And whether he likes it or not, it starts with him. And tonight, his energy and the way he shared the basketball is why we had a tremendous win. But this confidence stuff, I'm, I'm tired of hearing about that. I got two rings. I got two of them in this conference. I'm four of the five here. We know what we're doing. Uh, Jose, just walk me through that the last play. I'm right there with two seconds left. Big players make big plays. Just a big player. Will trust me to put the ball in my hands when time is winding down. And I was in the first time I, I've been sl slagging, and no better place to do it than against Iona. Uh, Coach, uh, Iona went on the 11 1 run, eventually took the lead. What did you say about your, to your team about keeping the focus at that point in the game? He's a Hall of Fame coach. They have, they have big time players. Um, you're not, you're not going to get it up to 15 and expect they're not going to respond. I, I played for him, I coached for him. So I, I know what's being said, I know what's going on. Um, what I was proud of is when they took the lead, we stayed poised, we stick to our execution, we stick to our strategy and our, our defense, and we had discipline enough. And didn't, didn't try to get it back in one play. We didn't go for the home run. We just chipped away, chipped away, did what we needed to, and I, and I thought tonight we showed great toughness. But that Iona team is terrific. We know how good they are. They're one of the best mid-majors in the country. Um, they've accomplished a lot. And what we saw tonight is, you know, we're, we're, we're just as good as anyone when we're, we're locked in the right way mentally. And uh, for us to do this tonight without Ant and, and, and S is, is, is really a credit to these young men and, and their mindset. Jose, was there any more motivation for you after the off nights of today to just come down and lose yourself early? It's not off nights. Uh, I tend to see everything that people critique about me. So I try to, like when I'm playing, cover all the critiques out. Um, and, uh, I know all the work I've put in, um, what it takes. I do believe that I'm one of the best players, if not the best player in the league. And coach tells me that all the time. The best in the country. So I try to just be the best of my ability. Um, and we just got to go down to Atlantic City and win four in a row. We've done it before. And all it takes is four to get to the big dance. Steve, you talked about how this team feeds off of his energy. Mm -hmm. how, how much has that changed this team, especially when he's rebounded from off? So when he came here, he told me, I'm a winner coach. And he is a winner, but he's a perfectionist. So he's watching film, texting me, adjustments, telling me what, what he likes to see, what I like, and what, what we have conversations. When things don't go the way he wants, and I say that in a very positive way, meaning the right way to play, he gets very frustrated with that. So what I try to tell him is there's no perfect game, right? You know, you, 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 you do 10 things and you do nine of them right, people are going to tend to talk about the one wrong. What about the eight great things you did or the nine great things you did? Concentrate on that young fella. But he's such a perfectionist. He wants to please his teammates. He wants to please me. He wants to please his money. He's a pleaser. But he's got to understand you're not always going to please everybody, and that's okay. you got to, you got to worry about who the important people are and know they're not judging you. When he's two for 15, I love him the exact same way. We still have pizza in my office right after, just like we're getting ready to right now. Nothing changes. Don't worry about the outside noise, and that's part of his growth. That's part of our growth as an organization. And when he understands that, we're, we're, we have a chance to be good. 
when he doesn't, which is human nature, which is normal for 22 year olds. That's when I gotta put a foot in his butt. Do you see a little bit of yourself in him in there? Identical. He's a, he's a, he reminds me a lot of me, so that's why I, I, maybe we're, we're kind of meant for each other. More than two crazies. Crazy. <laughs> um, as a student, I can see how kind of the energy shifts, um, especially when students are here and playing. So I was wanting, um, wanted to know kind of more how you feel when students are here and active and um, cheering for you guys. I'm going to say this. I, I was very disappointed in our student turnout this year. And I am the biggest supporter of, of the sixth borough. And when we came back from 9 and 3 over the break and we opened up with three home games when the students were back, I was very disappointed and hurt, honestly by the lack of the turnout we had. We're, we're, men's, you know, we're a basketball team. Um, our big, best years of enrollment are when the men's basketball team has success and goes to the tournament. Men's basketball can change all the issues. And when we understand that here at this college, we're going to be a lot better for it. And then we can talk about, that's going to put light on what a great engineering department we have, the O'Malley Library, the Kelly Commons, and that, that shines the stage. And tonight's crowd is how it should be every night. That's how Fordham was. That's how it was for Manhattan men's. That's how it should be every night. And I, and I promise you, these kids will all play their tails off for us. Yeah, so, you know, there was a lot of energy to start the game. You're playing Iona, and they challenge you, and then you were able to come back and make plays again. How'd you do it? It's a rivalry game. You just got to fight through adversity. Coach says that all the time. Uh, much respect for Coach Patino and his staff. Um, they were well prepared for the game. I just feel like better players are going to make better players when it comes down to them. So if, like I said, I'm just ready to get down to Atlantic City and win four games in a row, four and five nights. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it.